Today, mobile phones have evolved from simple communication devices to a gadget that can basically do everything, whether it be ordering food, availing a cab service, or looking for simple directions. It can all be done using a mobile phone. This is only possible due to the wonderful world of mobile applications. And today, we are going to talk about the testing of such applications. Hi, guys. My name is Arya, and I welcome you all to this session on mobile application testing. This is the first session on mobile application testing. So if you want to learn mobile application testing from Eddie Rekha's channel, this is the video you should begin from. OK, now before we jump into today's video, let me just give you guys a quick introduction on the topic that we will be discussing today. So first of all, we will be going through an introduction to mobile application testing, and we will also discuss the importance of the same. Next, we will be actually discussing the approaches to mobile application testing, which is basically manual testing versus an automation testing comparison. Next, we will be also discussing the advantages of mobile application testing through an automated approach. And in the end, we will be discussing the differences between native, hybrid, and web applications. And in the end, I will also give you a small demonstration as to how mobile applications are tested using the small tool called Appium. In this demonstration, I will not teach you how to install Appium. That is for a tutorial sometime later. OK, now let's get started. So what exactly is mobile application testing? Well, mobile application testing is the process every application developed for handheld devices has to go through. This obviously is to assure a certain level of quality before an application is released into the marketplace also commonly known as the App Store. Now this App Store is known in different names on different operating systems. For example, on all Google based operating systems for handled devices that is Android, the App Store is known as the Play Store, while on iOS devices, it is simply known as the App Store. Now mobile application development lifecycle generally tends to be much shorter than the others like desktop apps. Hence, these applications heavily depend on mobile application testing for their success. Applications get tested on the basis of various parameters like security, their functionality, usability, etc. This increases the general efficiency of the application on all fronts while also increasing the reliability factor amongst users that use them. Now let us discuss the importance of mobile application testing in today's era. How does a user generally decide which app to download for a certain purpose? Ten years ago, this question could have generated a host of answers depending on personal choice and whatnot. Today, it depends on two things. The first being ratings and the second being reviews. Daily, mobile phone users install new applications on the basis of ratings and reviews, which are directly related to how well your application performs. This has made mobile application testing ever so important. With a host of mobile phones out there with the different operating systems, screen sizes, processing capacity, testing has evolved into a mandatory process in the software development process. Now, new features keep users entertained, while quick bug fixes make sure that nobody uninstalls your app, making testing an essential process for an app's survival on the said marketplace. Now let us discuss the approaches to mobile application testing. Well, there are two different approaches for testing mobile applications on the basis of how they're performed, namely manual testing and automated testing. Manual testing, as the name clearly suggests, is a human process, majorly focused on user experience. Analysis and evaluation of the application's functionality, security, usability are done through the medium of a user in an explorative process. This ensures that your application lives up to a standard of user friendliness, and this type of testing is generally time consuming as bugs tend to take time to get recognized. Therefore, as a rule of thumb, 20% of an application's testing should be performed manually through the help of alpha and beta releases, while the rest should be automated. Now, let's move on to automation testing. Now automated testing is the second approach to mobile application testing and in this process an array of test cases are set up which should generally cover 80% of the testing process. The percentage is not a rule but generally a guideline followed in the software industry. Now let me list down a number of test cases that are generally performed through this particular approach. So firstly we could automate most tedious manual testing cases then we can automate test cases that can be easily automated we should always do them. Thirdly we should always automate test cases for most frequently used functionality. Fourth, we should always automate test cases that are impossible to perform manually. And last but not the least, we should automate test cases with predictable results. OK, so that was about the two approaches to mobile testing on the basis of how they are performed. Now let me just list down the key advantages of automated testing. So firstly, automation of mobile testing has proven to be really helpful. 
So here are a few advantages that come along with automation of mobile application testing. Firstly, it increases testing efficiency. Secondly, it enhances the regression test case execution. Third, it saves a bunch of time while also executing more test cases. Fourth, the same test cases can be performed again and again on multiple devices. And last but not the least, test scripts can be run parallelly on multiple devices. So these are a few advantages that come along with automated testing of mobile applications. Okay, so now that we have discussed the advantages of automating your test cases and basically following an automated approach to mobile application testing, let us now move ahead and discuss the various kinds of applications for mobile devices that are available in today's world. So these are native applications, hybrid applications, and web applications. Now, I have excluded web applications because they are very simple. You can Google them out and what web applications are. I think native applications and hybrid applications deserve an explanation of their own. So native applications are considered to be the most reliable, showing extraordinary performance when compared to something like a hybrid or web applications. Native applications are developed for a specific mobile platform using particular programming languages and technologies. iOS apps, for example, are written in Objective-C and Swift and Android apps are written in Java or Kotlin. C++ is used for native Windows and BlackBerry apps. And native app development is preferred for high performance apps. Now the following are the advantages of having a native application. So the first one is the access to built-in features of the devices. Then you will also have a native UI and UX. Then the application is directly available from app stores. And the last advantage is that you will have a specified software development kit for your development purposes. This is not to say that native applications don't come with their disadvantages. So some of them would be like high price and long development time. It's complicated and expensive maintenance and support, content not seen by search engines and support of multiple versions of the applications. Now, native apps are popular solutions nowadays and they deliver an exceptional user experience and are perfect for solving complicated tasks. Really good examples of native apps include Google Maps for both iOS and Android, Facebook for both iOS and Android, Snapchat for both iOS and Android again, Spotify, Twitter, and Pinterest. Now, you'll definitely appreciate the exceptional performance delivered by the application on both the platforms. Now moving on to hybrid apps. A hybrid app is in a way a compromise between a web and a native app development. It combines the advantages of both types of app development. A hybrid application is technically a web app packed in a native app container. Like the web app, it is written in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Unlike the web app, it is distributed through the app store or over the air for iOS devices. Another difference is that the hybrid app is reliant on the web view and not the mobile browser. Hybrid apps are good for banks, news, media, and content delivery platforms. Now, some advantages of hybrid apps are that they're cross-platform, they use the web development technology, they're mostly lower in price when it comes to support, maintenance, and development. Also, it helps in reaching a wider audience, and they're also downloadable from the App Store. Also, another big plus point is no ad blockers. Now, this is also not to say that they don't have their disadvantages. So their disadvantages would be something like they have very limited performance scopes and they don't have the whole clean look of a native app. Now, let's talk about a few examples of hybrid applications. So for many, it is surprising to learn that some of the world's most popular mobile apps turn out to be hybrid. This includes stuff like Amazon for both iOS and Android. Netflix used to be a hybrid application until a very good time, and now it's a native application and also stuff like Yelp and Untapped. Untapped is a beer service which will help you find the best beers in town. So that's a really nice app. So all these really cool apps like Amazon, Untapped, Yelp, and Evernote are all very good examples of hybrid apps. Now let us look at the key challenges that are faced by application testers in the mobile application testing world. Now mobile application testing differs from traditional process of testing desktop or web applications. This means it comes with its own host of challenges. The major challenge is due to diversity of mobile devices. Today, there are a bunch of screen sizes, operating systems, hardware options, software versions, etc. As of 2017, there are more than 60,000 Android devices on the market, and some of them have even started adopting the whole notch fashion, which was brought about by iPhone 10. Now, let me list down the major issues faced in mobile application testing. So, the first key challenge is quick rollouts. Now, mobile applications industry is one that acts upon bugs quickly, and they're always thinking about new features. The faster these get rolled out, the longer an application remains trending on its respective marketplace. 
The second key challenge is the multi-platform compatibility. Apart from Android and iOS, there are a bunch of operating systems executed across a multitude of platforms. This only increases the time taken to test a certain application. Thirdly is that mobile applications should work on a bunch of connectivity modes. Mobile phones are subjected to different modes of connectivity. For example, roaming, 4G, 3G, Edge, etc. Now applications must be tested in all these various connectivity modes and to see if they're working efficiently. The fourth point is end-to-end -end testing. The mobile phone industry demands that applications integrate seamlessly and be able to access data from the back end to be produced on the front end without any problems. Due to the diverse nature of mobile phones, this becomes a Herculean task. Last but not the least is the availability of tools. Now there are a number of tools today that automate mobile applications. Choosing the right one for your application is essential to the success and the efficient testing of the application. Okay guys, so this brings us to the theoretical end of this introductory session on mobile application testing. Now, as you guys know, none of the Edureka videos are ever without a demonstration. So for today's video's demonstration, I will be giving you guys a quick sneak peek into what we will be doing ahead in future videos. So in the future videos, you will be introduced to a tool called Appium, which is an open source tool that is used for mobile application testing. Just to give you guys a sneak peek into what it looks like. So what we have done is firstly, I have installed Android Studio, I have installed Appium, and I have installed a few drivers to get them both integrated and running seamlessly. So let me just show you. This is what I have done. I have made a small application that absolutely does nothing, and this is very easy to build. And you can check out our Android development videos for the same. And what we have also done is, I have also downloaded the calculator app, which is provided by Google. And you can download this from apkpr.com, and you can just search for the calculator out there and download it. It's a 2MB APK. Now, what we want to do first is, we want to install this APK. So the question arises, where do we install it? Well, you can install it on your local device, but if you don't really have an Android phone, then what you can do is start up an emulator. Now, I have a Nexus 6 emulator that I have set up through Android Studio. So Android Studio is going to be the primary medium of writing our apps and writing our test cases. So I highly recommend that you go ahead and install that on your device or your system. So what you see out here is an emulated device that looks like a Nexus 6. Next, what we want to do is also install ADB. So to install ADB, you have to go on Google and just type in ADB. So if you type ADB out here, you can follow these download links and install them. Now ADB is used for checking our Android devices and installing apps. Now, as you guys can see, I have already installed the APK on my device. You can simply do it by going ADB install and then putting the path of the APK on where it is stored on your system or device. And if it is successful, it'll show a success out here. Now you can also check if the device has successfully installed your application by going into the app drawer and just checking it out there. Now, I will always recommend that you use a local device because the emulator that comes along with Android Studio is not up to the mark. It kind of takes a lot of time to install stuff and it generally takes up a lot of time that could be used in testing. Okay, so as you guys can see, our calculator has been installed out here. So what we want to do is now, you want to go ahead and start up Appium. Now I have installed Appium from the Appium official site. That can be easily found out by going Appium and going to appium.io. So out here you can see that you see this download button, which is the Appium desktop version. Now Appium also has a command line interface version, but I highly recommend that you use the desktop version because this is what we are going to be using in future videos to actually test our applications. Now let's just wait for Appium to start up. Okay, so Appium has started up out here. And as you guys can see, Appium is just a server. It is a server for testing purposes and it is not much more than that. You will need a bunch of things other than Appium to actually test your applications. Now, just to give you guys a sneak peek into how applications are tested using Appium, this is gonna be the general process every time. So what you wanna do is start your server. Now, after you have started the server, you wanna go ahead and press this search icon, which says start inspector session. Now, the inspector session is where you generate your test script that you can run on various devices. Now to generate your test script, we will be first setting up our desired capabilities. 
I will explain what desired capabilities are in our next video, which is going to be Appium tutorial, where I will also show you how to install Appium along with its various dependencies. So first of all, the first desired capability that we want to set up is the app. Now to set up the app, all you have to do in the value section is go ahead and paste in the address of the app that is stored on your device. So as you guys can see, I have calculator.apk going on out here. All you want to do is go into properties and copy down the location. Control C that, put it out here, paste it, and you also want to put in the name. So go ahead at the end of this, put a slash and put in calculator.apk. So that serves as the app path. So as you guys can see, it generates a JSON representation out here. So it's basically mapping key value pairs and sending them to the server to react upon. Now we need a couple more desired capabilities. One of them is device name. So for device name, you can go into your command prompt again and you can go ADB devices. And this will show you the list of devices when it comes to Android that is connected to your computer at this moment. So for us, we have our emulator that is running. So this is emulator 5554 and all you want to do is copy this and then paste it out here. So that will set up our device name and we also need to specify the platform name. So once we've set up the platform name, it's going to be Android. All you want to do is go ahead and hit start session. Now when you hit start session, another interesting thing to note is in this page. So as you guys can see, it will give you a complete log of what is actually happening in the background. So you need not worry if you go through any error, it'll show up out here. Suppose it can't find your device then it'll show that device not connected or Appium couldn't find a device. But if everything goes correctly, you should see a screen that pops up here that will let you begin your testing process and let's just wait for the screen to come up without me explaining much. Now I always recommend that you use a local device because of this reason because Emulators take a long long time, especially the Android Studio emulator and this being an i3 device with only about 8 gigs of RAM. This is going to be a slow process for most of us. I normally recommend around 16 gigs of RAM an i5 device with at least 16 gigs of RAM for any sort of heavy testing procedure that you might want to follow. If we go ahead and go on our calculator out here. Okay, so our server has started up after a long period of waiting. And what you see out here is the interface that will be used for testing of our application. So let the interface just load up properly. So if you guys can see, our calculator has actually launched on our emulator without us even invoking it. And that is because Appium has invoked it. Now let us just wait for this slow process to actually end and the screen out here to appear. So as you guys can see, our interface has loaded up. That means our calculator has also been invoked on our emulator. Now what this is, is the element selector. And I will tell you more about this in our Appium tutorial video. Now what you can do out here is you see these bunch of buttons. So first is select element. So this allows us to select an element like this. And out here you see a bunch of options like tap, send keys and clear. So tapping is basically, you can tap that button and test it for the interactions that it has. You can also send values that is basically send keys and the best part about Appium is that you can start a recording. Now if you start recording out here, what it will do out here is generate a test script. So suppose I were to go on nine, I selected nine as an element. So the step part takes a little bit time. So Appium lets us record our test scripts that we can paste so you can tap it and you'll see that nine pops up out here. It's a little slow process, but you'll see it happen. And you can also see it happen out here on the emulator. Now you see that nine got tapped and nine actually got output on the display. So that's how you actually test your applications. We will get to the testing phase of this application in much more detail in upcoming videos. But for now, this is how you can set up an application on an emulator and also start that application on Appium for testing purposes. Okay, so now that nine has been pressed and it both appeared on the screen of our emulator and the screen of our testing interface, you can see a little bit of code that comes up. Now this code is basically your test script that you are generating and basically you can go ahead and select a bunch of elements and you can send them keys, you can tap on them and it will constantly generate a test script in a bunch of different languages. You can choose a language here, Java, Python, Ruby, and there's also the robot framework. So that was it for today. 
I showed you guys how to set up an application on an emulator out here with the help of ADB. In the upcoming videos, which is Appium tutorial, I will be showing you how to install Appium from scratch. And then we will also dig deep into the testing of any sort of application. We will be mostly testing native applications as native applications are much more robust in performance. So until next time, have fun learning about Appium, Android Studio, and various other mobile application testing tools. In the next video, which is Appium Tutorial, I'll be meeting you guys there, and we will be digging deep into this tool that we have found. So goodbye. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it, and you can comment any of your doubts and queries, and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!